Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today, we're taking a look at an amazing add-on known as Soccer. This add-on is for Blender and it is an amazing procedural modeling tool which you can use to create motion graphic styled models and you can also create procedural models directly here in Blender. This tool is heavily influenced by Houdini and the fun fact is it comes with over 250 nodes which you can use to create procedural models and this is just super awesome. So with this said, let's dive directly into Blender and take a look at how you can actually get started. So with Blender open right here, you would notice that we have our default cube. Sorry, boo, we're gonna take out this default cube and then from here, I'm just gonna go over and you know get this right here. Now, if you wanna install these, it's quite simple. All you have to do is go over to edit, go over to preference, go over to the add-on. I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can get this tool. And from there, you can just simply add the zip file. And with that done, where you'll be able to find this is directly on any of these windows you can simply click right here and, and you'll notice that it is here known as soccer so how does this work this is very interesting for you know a lot of people and i kind of find this very very useful for a lot of cases now if you're trying to do things like scatter which is one of the most things that everybody kind of uses node to do you will find this extremely useful by default if you want to do this in blender you know you just need a bit of work around play with the array and all that stuff but today we're going to see how this actually works so with this here and with everything ready to go i'm just going to go ahead and click on new now once i click on new you'll notice we have a node tree and everything seems to be the same so with this right here i'm going to hit shift and a and from there we have to go to input now before you actually get started you need to create a first object so with this i'm just going to go ahead and go over to input and then we can start with the default cube so i'm just going to go ahead and start with the default cube i know right now the previous default cube is like you took me away to get another side chick yep so we have this right here so you click on preview so that you can see what you're working with and with this here you can now proceed to start doing some very uh interesting houdini like stuff so first things you might want to do, you know, just to get started with this is you might, you know, want to try out a little bit of a bevel. So I'm just going to go ahead and type the word bevel right here. And once I type the word bevel and click right here, I can simply load this into the object. You would notice that we have different colors. Now, this is for the object. This is, you know, when you want to plug some sort of vector stuff, you know, there should be some operators here. I pretty much don't know, but right here is where your values are now if you look at this you'll notice that it also have some circles now if you click on them it simply means that you're hiding them from being exposed directly here within the node graph and if you want to see them or you want to see the properties that this contains you need to go over to items and then click right here now when you click right here you'll notice there's a truckload of other ones which you can also expose so in case you want to play with them you can easily you know take a look at them as you proceed so with this right here the next thing which we would like to do is to set this as preview setting as preview is the best way for you to actually tell blender that you want this node to be the most visible node or you know the, the node that is visible on the viewport so i'm just going to set this to preview and you can see we have this right here next thing which i would like to do is maybe offset this a little bit and add a couple of division now this looks interesting but how does the houdini thingy or how does the procedural thing actually come in play how it comes in play is this if i hold down shift and tap a one more time i can simply use the search this time and i will search for the word insert now once i go in and search for the word insert i can link the object right here i can set this as it is and then i can choose to insert this as individual objects and i can change the thickness so i can make the thickness this much and also i can also push in the depth so if this is also something i'm trying to do i can proceed to get this now with this done i can go ahead and relink this over to this part and i am losing little or nothing all right so you can choose to work either ways now the whole procedural nature is you have this node you can go ahead and rewire this right here and also rewire this right here so once i do that right now you'll notice we're having some very interesting things that might literally take you a lot of time to do and you can see this right over here now with this done i can you know play with this just a little bit and i can still reinitialize this whole bevel thing one more time so i'm just going to go ahead and click copy paste and ctrl c ctrl v does that for you i'm going to link this back right here and set this as preview so i'm just going to turn down this offset a little bit and you can start noticing that we have this very lovely stuff all right pretty cool so this is one of the very interesting things that you might want to do with this now with this said let's take a look at how you can do some things that are very node like so we've actually <laughs> talked about the basics and i know you guys like this right now but then before you go ahead and download this tool let's talk about some other cool things that you have to know so one of the interesting things with houdini is if you go ahead and type the word uh geometry so 
you know the same thing which you're doing you start up with simple geometry and then we throw in a simple box which is known as cube in blender so once we throw in this box you can now notice we have exactly this so the same thing that happens in blender is exactly what is happening in Houdini or should I put the vice versa so if I simply click here I'm telling this tool I want it to be visible on, on the viewport and then we can go ahead and press the tab key one more time and type the word extrude and if i go over and select the poly extrude click this right here connect this and launch this you would notice let's turn that off you would notice right now that i can simply go in and choose to increase the distance and i can also choose to you know play with the insertion now the beautiful thing about working with houdini i mean one of the most beautiful thing is you can actually see your independent faces and you can do a lot of things with that this gives you the power to make certain decisions i can go in here and say i want phase five and click just right there and my extrusion is just going to happen only on phase five now this is also something that you know you would want to see in blender and the beautiful thing is you now can actually get that happening so because we're working procedurally we're just going to go back and click on set preview so we just you know we're just going to go ahead and work with this right now and for you to actually get that going you can now select based on index so take a look at this if i hold down shift and a and search and say select by index I can simply drop this right here, connect this over to the object. And once we have this done, I can set my preview. And with this right here, if I go over to where I have the items, I can select the component type that I want. We have the vertices, the edges and the face. So I'm just going to go ahead and select face. And you can notice that we have this set to zero. The same thing that happens in Houdini. So in Houdini, if I simply go back, you can notice that we have this set to zero. We have this set to five, we have this set to three same so right now you can actually do that same procedural kind of modeling that you can do in houdini right here of course if you want to make some changes you can say you don't want to select the second phase you want to select you know the first phase i can actually go in here and type number five and you notice we have that right there so with this i can also choose to just relink this because this is all procedural right now i can choose to do that all right you can see that beautiful thing going on right there and i can choose to also do something like this so pretty interesting stuff that you can actually uh, create so if i simply come back here there are also certain things which you like to do that you can have you know full access of so if i simply select this i can also deselect just that part and then i can have all of these other parts doing exactly the same thing so this is some sort of inversion type and this really makes a lot of sense so with this said let's dive directly into talking about you know all those beautiful extrusions and all that stuff you would like to know how do you match things that is also another question you would probably be asking and how do you scatter things so we have this object right here now this object is so beautiful that we want to scatter things or scatter several points across it but before we actually get scattering i think it's very interesting that we can create certain objects so we're going to go ahead and add a sphere so let's go ahead and add that simple sphere i'm just going to go ahead and type sp so let's just get the uv sphere beautiful so once we drop the uv sphere right here i can simply load up a scatter so let's search for that i'm going to go load up a scatter and we have that scatter right here now once i link this up and down i can link this as the object which i want to scatter and then i can link this as the object that it should scatter to and once i select this and press this key you would notice that we have all of these beautiful points right there i can also choose where and where i want this scatter to happen if i don't want it to happen within the face i can go ahead and select the vertices you can see how interesting this is i can also play and you know dial down the radius this is very interesting and if you already have a pre-designed stuff which you want to scatter things to you can simply proceed to doing that so i can have this i can link this all the way back link this right here you know have that right there and you can notice we're creating geometries as we proceed and then i can run this all the way through to this point and of course we can have all of these beautiful things you can set preview here and come back here and reset the preview in case you know this doesn't update on your scene and then we can go back and reduce this just about that point so this is you know pretty interesting and the, the modeling features that you can get out of this is just insane so you can see with the scatter feature like this you can easily create mograph styled uh you know assets so if you're trying to make some model which would have some sort of scatter and maybe you want to simply control these things it is quite easy for you to go ahead and control them and so with this scatter point right here you might also be wondering how do you merge certain objects so for this we're just going to dive into a brand new scene where i'm going to show you guys how you can actually get that one going so with our brand new scene open right now let's go ahead and create some very interesting stuff so right here i'm just going to type the word create because i'm very indecisive of what to create right now i'm probably should use this on the monkey 
monkey or maybe we should just use the ico cube and i have this right here now if i simply drop this i can preview this and you can see what it is and with this done we would like to do some very you know crazy stuff and we can actually you know select random so i can simply select a random and once i select the random right here i can drop this to that point click here you notice nothing changes go over to the items go to the properties make sure i'm within the faces you can tone this down and also choose to set this from select to the select so once i do that you'll notice i'm selecting various parts now with this done i can simply zoom all the way out and then i can proceed to launch some very cool stuff now at this point you might want to you know do the whole beveling in session stuff yeah you can simply go ahead and since we've talked about that i'm just going to speed ramp this so with this done i can still go in and you know right around this part throw in some subdivision now if you're also wondering if you have your modifiers here all your modifiers exist and you can actually proceed to work with them so i can you know throw in a subdivide and just simply link this in between that and you can notice we're having some very cool stuff right now and with this there if you're trying to also create extra geometry while you're working you can have access to doing that so the best way to actually get this one done is if you hold down shift and a so let's say we just want to add a plane so i'm just going to go ahead and add a simple plane we can link up this plane so i can simply link up this plane right here you can see we have a plane in the middle now if you're trying to also transform this plane you can simply launch the transform so most of these things that you have here are exactly what you can have or exactly what you can do with houdini so if i simply link this up and set this now this is set to object mode so whatever changes i'm making right here you would notice it's only working within the object mode but this is not what we want we want to transform the plane so for us to transform the plane i need to make sure i check edit mode and this in itself is quite similar to what you have in you know houdini so in houdini you can still throw in a node so if i press the tab key and type the word transform you can go ahead and get a transform node and with this transform node you'll be able to move certain things around so i can still choose to select a certain part like this and with the transform node i would be able to use either of these values or either of these you know to move things around now the coolest part about how you can work with this is while you're working in blender i don't know for anyone but for me i think one of the most part for me is the values you get to dial they are very simplified as you can see them right here so it's very easy for you to make those decisions and be like you know i don't want to transform i want to scale i want to rotate i want to get these things up and running you get so with this i can choose to get the scale and i can set the scale to about you know three by three by three and then i would need to launch another transform which is a local transform and we can launch that right here and i just need to make sure that this is within the edit mode and i can set this all the way down don't notice any feedback just make sure that you have set preview turned on this is the way you can see it all right so let's turn off all of this overlays so we can see what we have and just like that you can start building some very interesting looking stuff so let's talk about merging now merging is one of the best thing that has ever happened to node and it is very interesting to see how you can go ahead and merge several things so for example if we're right here in blender and i choose to get not blender houdini so right here in houdini if i choose to you know merge these things together i can proceed to just get rid of these nodes and throw in a simple merge all right so by simply throwing in this merge i can select these two objects and i can merge them right here now you don't really see any difference because we took out the transform so i'm just going to get that transform right here and with the transform in between these two i can simply move this wherever i want so we can now have two objects existing in the same place the same thing that we can do here is exactly what i'm going to do directly in blender so if we dive directly back into blender you'll notice we have a very simple node tree here so i'm going to hold down shift and a one more time and for this i'm going to type the word merge if i choose to merge objects together i can simply load that there now let's get suzanne we haven't seen her in a while so we're going to add monkey and for this i'm just going to load suzanne right here so with this i can simply load this to the array mesh that i want and then i can simply load this as the main object if i hit preview right now you would notice we have suzanne and then we have this other thing right here you can also throw in that transform 
like we looked at earlier so i can simply get that local transform and i can just simply throw it in between these two and with this done i would be able to move suzanne wherever i want her to be so if i want suzanne to go back to this point like that we can actually get these things going so if you're trying to create some very crazy interesting stuff you have all of the tool sets that you can use to do that all of these things you can actually find them here now for the constants you can just simply throw in a number and you can load this number right here and for our own case if we want to use it as a size i can set this and simply use this to drive the size let's preview this so you can see and you can notice that since we're working procedurally we're having all of these things you know work for us so i can have this all right so you can notice that we already have this one here so in case you want to rewire things you can get on with that and if i preview this you can see we have that scale right here and if i preview this right now we have that so i can use this and control whatever i want and the same thing goes with all of these other nodes you can simply rewire them and get some very cool stuff happening with them so if we want trying to also add some modifiers we can grab those modifiers from here so i will select the subdivide and simply launch that right there we're going to set this as cat clack and i would simply subdivide this a little bit so you can see what we have right here now if you're also thinking of you know uh, shredding these you want to make some very interesting stuff this tool is definitely going to be very interesting and what your while for you to make that stuff so for the next scene what we're going to do is going to be even more crazy so what we're going to do is very simple create a brand new grid then we're going to make some selections select these things by random and you know we've already talked about how you can do this for one part i will simply go through and extrude the part and the other part i'm just going to create a brand new delete node now this delete node is very similar to the blast node that you have in houdini and i'm just going to blast one part out now with this part you know blast it all the way out you can simply go in and reselect all insert some parts then from there you can actually do some extrusion at this point you have two different things which you can play with then you can also choose you know at the end of the day to merge these things together now with this said i think it makes a lot of sense so if you're thinking about creating procedural stuff this would work for you now for example if you're trying to make some things like houses stuff like that you can you know sort of mimic that by throwing in a little bit of poke and you can poke some parts around you know this would make you have that yeah flexibility of creating some sort of cityscape and and random stuff you can always work with these things and at the same time if you want to add material there is a long set of things that you can use actually let's take a look at how you can proceed to add in material right now so that you can get good with that actually before we even talk about the material there is another kind of selection which i think a lot of people would find very interesting there is a select alternate face so with this you can select various patterns on the surface so for example with the grid that we've created now you can simply use the select alternate face and you can select based of offset and you can make setting you know selection decisions with this so this makes you know it makes some sense so if you're trying to get some patterns on objects you can simply use this to get started with that now once we're done with this the next thing which you want to do is load in material so with this how you can get this going is you can simply right click and type the word material and once that is done you can go ahead and sort out the material now the beautiful part about this material is once you assign the material you can go over to the material selection tab where you can make changes to this so whatever changes you make actually you get to see them automatically on the viewport now with this done you can also throw in a shader node which is going to be more like a final shading node for this and you can simply set this to either smooth or flat and this would make a lot of sense for so many people and if you're trying to texture this you can either use this mode to texture stuff if you want to do that procedurally or you can simply assign material by using the default way of assigning material here in Blender. Finally, I would say a tool like this is pretty awesome for anyone who wants to work with it. I just figured out that the animation side doesn't seem to work that much. I don't know if it is a problem for me or if it's, you know, something that is still in development. And a tool like this is pretty awesome and it's cool to see that it's coming over to Blender. So hopefully over time, I guess we could start building, you know, digital assets that you can export to game engines like you know unity unreal and so on and so forth using a tool like this i would also love to see this support animation and i would also love to see some more you know uh flexibility and also some more stability come over to this tool if you want to get this i'm going to put a link in the description where you can go ahead and get it and this is pretty awesome and i'd like to know what you guys think about all of this 
in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and hit the like button and don't forget to share with a friend and guess what we're now on patreon and you can simply support the channel by going over to patreon and supporting this channel with whatever thing that you have and that's about it and of course until i see you guys next time with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace